I've, I've been a back-to-back -back MVP. You know who I am. And I play my game a certain way. And he gave respect to Patrick Beverly. Boston will go out in the second round five or six games. You got Milwaukee taking him out? Yes. Wow, we're talking about a guy who came off the bench in college, a three-star recruit, who became the NBA MVP. Chris Broussard here, and welcome to the brand new Hoops on Fox podcast. This podcast will give you your daily dose of all things NBA from Fox Sports, including the best content from Skip and Shannon, Nick Wright, plus special guests, fresh NBA content from myself, post-game interviews from NBA stars around the league, and much, much more. Up first, Chris Broussard joins Skip and Shannon to dissect Kyrie's clutch performance in Game 2. Chris, how far can Kyrie carry these Celtics? Boston will go out in the second round, five or six games. Mm. You got Milwaukee taking them out? Yes. Wow. Yes. Now, that said, the question is how far can he take them? Mm. He could take them to the NBA Finals. I've said all season long. You have. Right? Milwaukee, Toronto, and Boston are all very close. I would not be shocked if he got them to the NBA Finals. I would be shocked if Philadelphia and anybody below them, mm -hmm. Indiana, any of those teams got to the Finals. Hmm. I would not be shocked if Boston did because they are that good. But, and, and when they get beat in the second round, mm -hmm. people may say, oh, they went further without Kyrie. Last year, they were better without Kyrie. I don't want to hear that. That's nonsense. They are not better without Kyrie. If they lose in the second round, as I'm predicting, it won't be because he's the problem. Right. Okay, last year, they could have lost. People forget. Milwaukee took them seven games. Yes. And that was a Milwaukee team that's not even close to what they are now because Brad Stevens had a huge coaching advantage last year over Milwaukee because Mike Budenholzer wasn't there. Budenholzer is there now. I think the talent of the two teams is very similar, but Giannis is better than better. Kyrie, even though Kyrie's better in the clutch. But Giannis is a better player overall. And Budenholzer and Stevens is probably a wash. Mm -hmm. They're both great coaches. So they won't have any coaching advantage. Mm -hmm. And then against Philadelphia last year, they had a huge coaching advantage. So they've either had a talent advantage or a coaching advantage, like now. They're going to beat Indiana because they have a talent advantage. Mm -hmm. When they get to Milwaukee, it's going to be even. And so uh, Kyrie is playing great. I think the, the, sil the bright spot of last night, if you're a Celtics fan, is that perhaps, and I do believe this may have happened, the pecking order was finally set. <laughs> the, the Celtics, other players finally realized, okay, He's the man. He he is the right. Guy. He's realized. the guy. Mm -hmm. You know, and oh, they, then, didn't know that. they didn't know that. I, I don't think they knew. <laughs> I don't think they knew. They they felt, hey, we got the game seven with LeBron last oh. year without Kyrie. They fought against it all year. But last night, and he got guys involved. He wasn't just sure. ball hogging. He got guys involved. Tatum was able to get his 26. But when push came to shove, Kyrie showed them why he's Kyrie Irving. And now I think they get it. And also, Marcus Smart's injury, while he's a very good player for them, it does allow Terry Rozier to it play does. more minutes with Kyrie, and that was effective last night. So, look, I, I like Boston. I like what they have going. I just think Milwaukee will beat them next well, week. Well, he can take them all the way. He can take them. I, I agree with you because he and Kyrie, Kyrie, he and Kawhi are the only two guys that's been on the biggest of biggest stage. That's the NBA final skip. And we know what this guy's done. He's a big shot taker. He's a big shot maker. Mm. Game seven, it doesn't get any bigger than that. And he was willing to pull up with 15, 20 seconds on the clock and drain a three. A lot of guys are like, well, I'm going to try to get to the basket. He's like, nah, I'm going to take that. I'm going to end this right here right now because I know I got Braun to back me up. If I miss, he's going to grab the rebound, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Skip, that was a big time man. A little different. Last night, he put everybody in the blender. He was shaking them up, and they got no answer. And like you said, Indiana is just talent deficient. Right. If you got Bogdanovich, if you're going to put the ball in his hand, that's going to be the guy down the stretch that's going to win you the ball game, you're going to lose to Boston every time. Mm -hmm. Because Boston is supremely talented. I'm surprised that it, it even got to this point. They were trailing by seven in game one, right. trailing by 11. Yeah. So that tells you, okay, Boston, yeah, very, yesterday. very fortunate. But Skip, he, he's, I mean, Kyrie is special. Mm -hmm. there's not, there are not five guys in the clutch you'd rather have the ball. In the NBA right now, 400 players, they're not five guys in the clutch you'd rather have the ball in their hands other than Kyrie. Mm. Not Which is why your man misses Kyrie Irving. He misses us too. Uh. 
You rather have Jason Tatum or you rather have LeBron? You rather have Al Horford or you rather have LeBron? Mm. You rather have Rogier or Jay LeBron <laughs> or you rather have LeBron? So don't pretend like it's a one way street. The you Lakers, missing us too. The Lakers don't have a closer. Oh he my closed God. again last night. He he is special, and that was a special night. So was James Harden, by the way. We're not talking yes. about him, but that was special. Yes. Okay. But but this young man. The show he put on, it was just dazzling. <laughs> the ball handling, the handle, the lift, the fallaways, just unstoppable. And he's not not the biggest man. You Mm-mm. know, what would he give him? Six, six, one, six, two, really? six, two, six, two, six, two. Wow. But he's, but he's like, he's not a big man. He's slightly uh, built. He but boy, he, woo. He's woo. one of the best finishers. As a guard, he As might guard. be the best With finisher. either hand at the rim. Right, right. So, I sat back last night watching this, and I, I haven't been, been able to figure out Kyrie Irving all year long because he has alienated all those kids in that locker room at different points, and mm-hmm. they fired back at him, and you're right. He just said, okay, watch this. Mm-hmm. But I don't know exactly from night to night or interview to interview what I'm going to get from him sure. because, listen, this is my conclusion about him and KD, his new bestie, his new <sighs> – you know, they're the dynamic duo that could just change the whole really landscape could. of this league yeah. on July 1st. Mm-hmm. But these two together, in all my time watching the NBA, they're the most thin-skinned, unpredictable, mood-swinging, over-emotional, dynamic duo mm-hmm. superstars that I've ever seen. And they're, they're the same because... They just, they're so volatile from interview to interview, what you're going to get from them. Yep. And then, again, another reference, Brian Windhorst, but, but he reported that after Game 7, 2016, Kyrie had hit the shot of shots, and he goes, according to Brian, went in the locker room, and, and he's angry about something that nobody could ever figure out, but he was just angry, <laughs> and he wouldn't celebrate with his teammates, and he ends up FaceTiming Kobe Bryant. LeBron's sort of arch rival. Yeah, that's why I did it. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe that moment wasn't what he thought it would be because maybe. you remember KD's like, well, you know what, well, this is it. And maybe Kyrie says, man, I thought it was like the heavens was going to open up and everything, I, I but you want to. That's I, unfortunate I, if that's the case. Yes. And they both have, well, KD's alluded to that. Yes. Yeah. And maybe it was Kyrie. So, that's unfortunate. And then Brian Winterst also said after game one against Indiana, Kyrie had just an okay by his standards game. And the final buzzer goes off, and he runs over and hugs his father and sister. And he, Brian compared it to Tiger Woods winning this Masters on Sunday. Like it looked like Kyrie had just won the ultimate championship. And it's, <laughs> what, what, what are you doing? You know what? I don't know what he's doing. I can't explain any of it. But I just know that between him and Kevin Durant, the talent is off the charts in both cases. We're where they are as special as it gets. Yeah. Those are two of the most unstoppable scores this yeah. league has ever seen, yeah. ever. Question. Yes. No question. Yeah. And, and they're just so moody, unpredictable, that I have no idea what they're going to do on July 1st because they probably don't. Can I ask you a question? If winning a title, the first in the Cavalier history, hitting the shot of shots, playing as well as he played throughout the entirety of those game sevens. He did. If you're not happy then, what's going to ever make you happy? Mm. Because even if he goes to Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant's 1A. Kevin Durant is 1. He might be 1A, but Kevin oh, yeah. Durant's 1. Yeah, so you're right. So what's going what's gonna to ultimately make Kyrie happy? Chris, do you know? It, it wouldn't be something. It'd be something. It's something you have to deal with inside yourself, mm-hmm. outside of basketball. Right. So that's, that's what it would be. Like I said, I hope that's not the case, that they, they aren't happy. And I'm not saying – I get it. It's good that everything doesn't revolve around basketball right. for them. They have a balanced life. But your basketball, if you, I mean, Kyrie, that shot, off the top of my head, I would say that's the second biggest shot in NBA history. The first being Ray, Ray Allen's yes. shot. Wow. You know, I, I mean, what's be, the that, big that, greatest comeback ever? Know, that Jordan shot at Utah was pretty big. Is that? It was game six, oh, though. Yeah. yeah so I give has, you that. I, Ray Allen it's missed more, that shot. I, may, might be more iconic, but Kyrie, first championship for Cleveland in 52 years, which might not mean anything to people outside of no, Ohio. No, it was huge. But in it the 3-1 I, comeback, I that. you know, complete that. 73-win team. Like, but, but whatever the case, to your point about KD and Kyrie, about their sensitivity, and I, I do agree with you. However, I will say this in kind of in their defense. 
This is an era that we have no uh, previous eras of athletes never had to deal with. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that makes LeBron for all the passive aggressive tweets. And, uh, it's impressive that he's been able to handle it for the most I'll part the yeah. way he does. Yeah, right. I'll give you that. They are under scrutiny. These uh, types of shows. Jordan never had this. No. Yeah. So we scrutinize Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving on a Tuesday night in Utah, mm -hmm. game 57, it doesn't even matter. Right. Mm -hmm. Jordan, we only remember the, the makes. Mm -hmm. Magic, we only remember the great moments. Mm -hmm. But it, if they had been scrutinized like this, some of those guys if we get to us may, have been, may have had Because you have these other social media platforms. Uh, right. Everybody get to criticize you. They get to mm -hmm. add such I and agree. such. You suck. Right. So no, now, no the other thing about Kyrie and KD, they're both deep thinkers to me. Yes. They go way okay. deep, second, third level thinkers. Michael Jordan was not a deep thinker. Mm -hmm. I was around him a lot. He thought he, he wanted to play basketball and golf in yes. that order, and he wanted to gamble on both. Yes. Yeah, that's, right. that's how he yes. was. Right. Like he wanted to bet his life on basketball and any amount of money on golf that you wanted to bet. That's about what he, he was. And cards, too. And, yeah. He loved cards. to gamble. Okay. So right. only Anything thing it, to compete. Right. Yes. <laughs> Just to compete. Yes. Well, that's, right. that's it. But he didn't think twice. Like, no. His kids are always thinking, like, what, what, well, when it came what to does it all mean? Right. I, no, no, Skip. When no it came question. to basketball, that's he wasn't true. thinking. Uh -uh. I know I'm better than you. That's I know my team's going to be yours. <laughs> <laughs> and if you bet me, I know I'm going to take your money. That's it. That's You're right, like, though. That, that was Skip, the I agree. Mm -hmm. the, the overthinking things, it just makes you look at all the angles yeah. and yeah. can make you upset. What is what is my life? Yeah. How would I be remembered? Mm -hmm. What is my purpose? Like KD's explanation yesterday, that was a deep explanation about yeah. Patrick Beverly. Oh, it was. Oh, I could. But I just want to see you just take him to the hole. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> But it was I'm a great explanation. Kevin oh, yeah, he did throw know. that in. Put on PBA later. Next, Steven Jackson joins Nick and CeCe to break down the Warriors vs. Clippers Game 3 matchup. What do you make of what KD had to I know, say? I know exactly what he's saying, and I also know what Steve Kerr is saying. Steve Kerr is not saying go out there and jack 30 shots up. He's right. just saying be more aggressive. Mm -hmm. KD, KD understand that, but KD has to break it down to people that don't understand the game. And, and, and what he's saying is, I've been playing a certain way my whole career. And I've been good at it. You, all y'all stand up here asking me questions because I'm Kevin Durant. You know who I am. I've been a back-to-back -back MVP. You know who I am. And I play my game a certain way. And he gave respect to Patrick Beverly because guys like Patrick Beverly, we love. We want them type of guys on our team, and that's the way he plays. And the way he plays is effective. But at the same time, KD understands the game. He's a student of the game. He, he, he said it. I can go out there and dominate and, and score on him every time. That's not winning basketball. That's not how we won two championships. I'm going to continue to play. I understand what Coach is saying. I'm going to continue to play out the way I know how to play and play with my teammates. Yeah, I took the Steve Kerr comment like you. A coach is just trying to speak because 20 shots is one thing. In Kevin Durant's career, 435 games, he's taken 20 shots in his career. Only one guy took more than 20. That's in LeBron in the mm -hmm. same amount of time. But as far as 30 shots, KD has 20 games where he took 30 shots in his career. Regular season and the playoffs. 30 now, shots, a lot of shots. Now, there's shots. six more players that have more 30-shot games right. than him compared to just one with the 20-shot game. So what Steve Kerr is saying, Kevin Durant is not going to do. So Kevin Durant, when he has the press conference afterwards, he's not disobeying the coach. Not at all. He's just breaking it down to this is the way I'm going to play. Steve Kerr is telling you as I want Kevin to be more aggressive, but they both can be right. Mm -hmm. Steve Kerr is right. And Kevin Durant is right because he has made his reputation by being one of the most efficient players, scores that we've ever seen in this game. And that's one of the reasons why I fell in love with this game. Then once he went to the Warriors, now we just start picking them apart because we didn't like the move. We didn't like that the, the league wasn't balanced anymore. But Kev Kevin Durant's ability to be efficient is one of the special qualities about it. He broke down the defense, what they're trying to do to me. They're playing up under me. And he's right. He's got six offensive fouls. Patrick Beverly is all into his space as a player. Your space is your own space. A defensive player is not supposed to be able to come into your space. So they're not refereeing the games the right way. So Kevin should be able to push back to be able to gain the cylinder of his space back. He hadn't been able to do that. But he taught me an awful lot. I wish there was other NBA players. I know it's difficult because they're doing this four or five times a week. But he taught me something about basketball. And I like that when they give me because most of these guys that play at this level, they're basketball geniuses. And every once in a while, if they can just let me in to give me a little more insight, I appreciate, and that's what Kevin Durant did for me and, and, yesterday. And that's why he, he got kicked out in a lot of reasons, because you, once you go to the referee and they call the calls for Beverly, and once you go to the referee and say, ref, call it both ways, 
and you don't, we talked about it. Now I got to take it into my own hands. And that's why he's getting kicked out of the game. That's why all this other stuff is happening because the referees are not calling it both ways. Okay, well, except for the fact that in game one, Kevin Durant isn't the only one who got kicked out. No question. They both did. Right. And in game two, Kevin Durant's not and the that, only one. That was premature. No, that was premature. Got, for both of them. That was yeah. premature, They only too. got kicked out because it was their second technical. No, it I wasn't. But they got the two technicals within 20 seconds of each yeah. other. My, and, and I didn't think they had to. Th- they wouldn't have thrown them out if it was a close game. No question. It was there's a few minutes left. Let's just not nah, things get out of hand. But in game two, Kevin Durant's not the only one who fouled out. Beverly fouled out as well about yep. four minutes early. Here's my issue. I understand what Kevin Durant's saying. However, you don't become a four-time scoring champion if you only take the most efficient shots. If you only do it when it is in the most advantageous position. Maybe positions. the scoring champs that we have now, but when Kevin Durant was the scoring champion, and his field goal percentage will indicate that. He was, you know, listen, he's an incredibly efficient scorer, but in order to score 30 plus points a game, sometimes you have to take tough shots in tough circumstances, and he is a great tough shot maker. And the point that I am making is this. When, you're, when you have the 30 point lead, then of course, don't change anything. Mm-hmm. But when it's dwindling and Steph's on the bench because he's in foul trouble, and then it's dwindling more and Steph's on the court, but he is having an awful fourth quarter, then all of a sudden, you have to be able to tap into OKC Kevin Durant. Because Warrior Kevin Durant. Right. Not was to a make part- an excuse, but when you're in a big comeback, no one knows they're getting ready to break history. Mm-hmm. We up 31, bro. So and you don't want to change. And you never want to look like you're forcing it either. Because, like you said, he, he know the defense. He's dribbling into double teams. You don't want to force it. I mean, we're talking about the biggest. I mean, comeback in NBA history. Yes. When you're involved in that, you're in the moment. You don't know. They ain't gonna, what? What Lou Williams getting ready to do? Ten. You a, five. <laughs> yeah, right. Two. Uh, sure. There is a hindsight. Now, to I it. do agree with you that Kevin Durant, there should be more times that he should be aggressive. Now, he hadn't had to do that because he's in Golden State. So I do understand your argument. But when you are in that moment, you're in one of the, the biggest comebacks on the other side. You don't know. You don't know that when you're going to wake up the next morning it's getting ready to be history. But the, the other aspect of it is is that we are, when we talk about how we're going to evaluate these guys, we, some of them we're going to hold them to the standard that they want to be held to. Kevin Durant believes he deserves to be considered and has earned the right to be considered the best player in the world. I know a lot of people think he is the best player in the world. Yes. And in that spot, when you got a guy a foot shorter than you guarding you, when you have more turnovers than field goal attempts, when your team blows the biggest lead in playoff mm-hmm. history, and you, in back-to-back games now, have not been able to finish the games because of this back and forth with a guy who will never make an all-star team, who will ne- his basketball legacy might be this series, then you're going to be held to some real scrutiny. And when your coach says, I'm giving you the green light to be more aggressive, that's what I want to see tonight. I want to see Durant. Does he say, you know what? I am going to pull up and shoot over Patrick Beverly. I am going to be a little more OKC Kevin Durant because that might be what the series calls for. I, I don't think it's needed. I think it happens in basketball. Now it might be the biggest comeback ever, but I've been in games where we beat, we blowing guys out. What tends to happen is we get the clock watching. We're not even playing no more. We're just watching the clock, hurry up clock, run out, run out, and that's what happened. Mm-hmm. And, and the Clippers kept playing. It happens to teams, and it just so happened to them in the playoffs, but I'm not worried. KD going to come out and be the same KD. They're going to win by 30, and we won't even be talking about this. Now Chris Haynes and Jim Jackson joins Whitlock and Wiley to talk about Russell Westbrook's playoff struggles. Do you think Russell Westbrook will ever mature as a player? You stop believing in him, huh? You done? I, I, I just don't believe he's going to mature. Are you finished or are you done? That's what I want to know right now because, wow, we're talking about a guy who came off the bench in college, a three-star recruit, who became the NBA MVP, and that's where we want to really put our focus and criticism on a top-10 player, uh, a guy who's averaged a triple-double the last three years. This is not a maturity issue. This is a guy who went out there and put a franchise – on his back after the departure of another great player in Kevin Durant. This is a guy who is now looking around and it's time to start calling out role players, but that's not who he is. This is a guy who has Paul George and himself, and even this year, if you say he's immature, why would you defer to Paul George when he was healthy and playing at an MVP level if you're immature, if you're selfish, if you're not ready to win? He's trying to win at all costs, but in today's NBA, as we're sitting next to a guy who covers a team with four, five all-stars, sometimes you just ain't got enough. I love Russell Westbrook in terms of his moxie, his tenacity, the way he approaches the game. Could it be a, a better player? 
I'm sure he could get higher in the top 10 rankings, but there are 450 dudes in the NBA, man. And there's 440 dudes out there who need to do a lot more to even catch up to one Westbrook to now try to get in that rarefied air and saying he needs to be a perfect player. I like him the way he is. Address the situations around him, coaching included, and maybe you'll get more results. Mm. Got to mature. Yeah, he's got to mature. I don't know why. I don't know why son of a boy. He, he started rambling about just where he ranks it as far as the grand scheme of the players. We're talking about how can we get him to a level to where he's the leader of a championship 10 team. Because, look, right now, we can talk about the triple number. We can talk about all the stats piling up. But I need, to, I need to see composure from him. I need to see him making winning plays down the stretch. I need to see him not losing it when he gets fouled and going bumping somebody, getting a technical in the crucial parts of the game. Mm. I, need to, I, need to, I need him to allow uh, for if the three ball is not working, which it has been working all year. No, no. Get to that hole. Mm-hmm. We have to understand that everybody's not going to be able to shoot the three. Just because the league is, is ventured off into everybody shooting 30-footers, that's not Westbrook. He needs to shoot five-footers. That wasn't Kobe either. I get it. <laughs> he <needs to> shoot <laughs> a lot of people footers. can't shoot the three. And so till, till he gets to that level where he's mature, and I think really in order for OKC to reach their success, look, I'm not putting it all on OKC, uh, on Russ, I mean. But in order for oh, them to really? reach their full potential, <laughs> we, we talking huh? about them. What are we talking we, about We're now? talking about it right now. I'm, I'm not putting it all on. I but bet for, not. But in order for them to reach their full potential, I think Wes <clears throat> has to let go of a lot of the responsibilities that he wants, like trying to get the assist. He did the, that this year. Not this year. He, not this year. Not this oh, y'all stop. Y'all, y'all don't like the evidence. Okay, no, go. No, but, here, <laughs> but I think it's twofold because I, I go back to when Kevin Durant was there. They're up 3-1, it's, but it's game seven. They're killing Golden State with the side pick and roll. Killing them with Cannon, killing them with Adams. You know what? They go away from it and go one-on-one. At that time, Scotty Brooks was a coach. They allowed that to happen. So guess what? You end up losing the game. If you don't correct the mistakes early in the season and have more discipline as a team, it comes back to bite you in the playoffs, okay? It comes back because now it's magnified with the teams that you play because they're going to take stuff away. My thing is is twofold. One, Westbrook is who he is. He's not going to change. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is bring in a dynamic that's going to surround him with the right kind of people, which he has now. But you have to have more discipline on the offensive end to understand what kind of team you have. Not a three-point shooting team. So why, why go out there trying to be a three-point shooting team? You can pound the ball and still get things done, be a better defensive team. So I'm spreading the blame on everybody. Yeah. I'm spreading the blame on everybody across the board in okay, regards but, to that. But, but, but listen, every, when you lose, of course there's blame. No, no, but, but it's, not, it's not the losing, Jason. To me, it's the lack of discipline and understanding who they are as a team I, from I, the beginning. I would agree, but everything starts with your highest paid, most important franchise player. You, you got to get him on board first. But that got to come from upstairs. No, no, I, I get you see, but that's where it starts. I get, mm. But, Jim, the, the thing that's different in this league, because, uh, Jim, I'm old enough to remember, and everybody here is old enough to remember, these same conversations went on about Michael Jordan in Chicago in terms of him having to change his style mm-hmm. of play and being just a volume scorer that wasn't good enough. And what did they do? They also changed the coaching, and then that all of a sudden led the championship well, that, instantly. That, that, well, all the oh, other wait, selfish wait, wait. That, talk. That's my point. When they got Thank Phil you. Jackson in, Thank that you. helped. That helped Michael mature into a different player. Until you solve that problem, where that man, what Russell Westbrook, respects the man on the bench, he's not going to let change. Me, let me ask you this though. Let me, honest to goodness. Okay. I mean, we give Phil a lot of credit, and he obviously deserves it. Uh-huh. But, but. Michael Jordan wasn't making $30 million a year like players are today. They're much uh, harder to but raise. Yes, he but was but in the all, last year. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 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 It's all relative, but Michael <laughs> still, Michael from a persona perspective was still Michael Jordan. I don't care how much money it was. You couldn't. Before championships, before, before, everybody in the league. When the, but he was still the face of the league. I get it. So, so it no, was. No, 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 yeah, no, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. No, no. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Michael Jordan at that time, even when Detroit was winning, it was still about Mike. Yeah. In the, the league. The league was about Magic and Larry. No, no. Magic that was and Larry the, they were on the back end. When, when the yeah. Pistons won it in 90-91, this Magic and Larry weren't right. in that. Like and, that. and they even passed the torch in conversation. To Michael. Like, this dude, and, but, we can't but, do anything about him. And you say this. Yeah. Let me say this. 
Russell needs someone he respects. Kobe respected Phil, okay? Even LeBron respected Pat Riley right. to change some things. Michael respected so this, Phil. So and that's, coaching, that's what it is. This is a coaching issue. Yes. Right? Well, can yeah, we hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're talking about so, in, in regards to his maturity. Oh, as far as maturity, okay. Yes. Well, let's, let's talk about this, this maturity, Jim. Coach, but, uh, this, this but, is but, but, coach. But, but both coaches allow them to get away with everything, bro. No, I understand, I understand, I understand. Any stats over here, I can't, I'm, I'm just going to say it on top of my head. The coach ain't causing him to shoot five for 20? No, the, but, shoot, like, but, but the shoot, coach... Shooters shoot five times. Shoot, 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 do you, do you think if he was playing for Pat Riley, he'd be doing that? Mm. Not at all. Mm. Not at all. Quiet that's, on the set. Russell you, Westbrook. Quiet on the set. Hold on. If Russell Westbrook... If he was, if he Russell played, Westbrook. Yes, if he was playing for <laughs> Pop, that wouldn't happen. If he was playing for Jeff Van Gundy, oh, it wouldn't but happen. Jim, but Jim, but he's it, not. It's no but. He's not, but so who's in the wrong? Hold up, but that's my point. That's what you're missing. If he don't have somebody he can respect on the bench, he's going to do what he wants to Jimmy, do. Jimmy, let me say this. We're talking about a, a so subjective not... conversation right now, and we're going to have our opinions. Let me give y'all some facts, Uh-oh. first of all. Because this ain't the Oprah Winfrey that's show. Facts. No, this is fact. Because <laughs> y'all acting like they just hand out championships to great players. That's not how the game goes since the modern NBA started. Let's go 1980, last 40 years. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Franchises won a championship. Eight. 11. You know, since Russell been in the league, how many have won in his 11 years? Six. Uh-huh. How many star, star, next level Russell? I, I get, I get. So, so stop acting like this. He no, has no. to lead a championship team no. or he's not great no. or he's not mature. No, I, I think, uh, honest to goodness, today where we're starting at is just him getting out of the first round. Because this will be the third straight year. That's all we're talking get about. Out, get out of the first that's, round. That's and so I don't care if he was winning championships or not winning championships. His game needs to mature. He's not a three-point shooter. He continues to take three-point shots. That. He's he's not a point guard. And again, I, I love I, this. I agree with that. I, I love yeah, this, I give you that. I, I, I love this thing of like, let's blame it if the coach, coach, yeah, coach, 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 coach. Talk it's to a whip. player-driven league. It's a play. hey, but look, Hold but listen. On. Have you have you listen? I've been in those rooms when I've seen people change. I've been in those rooms. You think Kobe? Was like that with I'm, under I'm, Dale Harris? I'm not saying that. Mm. Bob, yo, huh? But what you're saying, but, but what you both... I said, I'm saying... He went for 35. I'm saying, uh-huh. saying it's a combination. I'm not oh, excusing Russ. To me, Russ, his emotions, he allows his emotions to make irrational decisions that hurt the team. Okay. But that goes Maturity. back to not being corrected early and on. That's and I that's agree, my and point. Just, I agree with you. That. But both of what you both are saying as well is that in order for Russ to mature and make the right plays... He has to have a coach he respects. Either you want to win and do the right but thing, it's not that or, you, or you don't. If it was that simple, he would do it. And don't do that. Because so, it goes that's, to state. That's why you it, got mentors and guys. Y'all didn't win it all. Y'all like didn't win it all. Look, What's I love y'all. I ain't got no ring. Oh, I ain't got no ring. You won one. <laughs> Golden State was there climbing, getting there, but they even lost in the first round to the Clippers. That Golden State team before KD, that team. And you know what happened? You been a game or lost a series? Uh, series. Oh, 2014. Oh, you won. Do, do you back there? You won back there. Come on, man. You won back there. I'm going back. You were still rel- 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 they, this, they've this won three too. of the last four. We're going to go back oh, okay. four or five years. Yes, okay. we are. And you know what happened? Uh-huh. Coaching changed. Whatever you want to say, the guys matured. You, but guess what happened? They blossomed, and you could say, oh, it's in coincidence of the coaching change. We're trying to say it's a oh, correlation. It's a correlation. Ain't, ain't Russell Brown 30? Who's you're, his coach? you're talking about Steph when they who were 25 and 20. Yes. Who, who, were his, who were his coaches? And don't act like he hasn't been in the finals before. Let's not do that to him. Like, first of all, we say, oh, you can't get out the first round. Oh, but I've been to the finals. Oh, but that ain't enough. We keep moving the goalposts. Should, should, should they be beat Portland? Should they beat Portland? They're not a higher seed, so technically, no. They don't. Portland huh? doesn't have Nurkic. Portland is that. It doesn't matter. Should they, they be beat Portland? You act like in Vegas, Rumble. in Vegas, they're favored. They're favored to get past, the, yeah. past Portland right. this year. Yeah. If they do not, then what? If, it's all a coach issue? No, I'm just saying, I'm not... Do they have A-plus coaching? You know that's not true. Yeah. So, therefore, you most of the league doesn't have A-plus coaching. that's why coaching. most of the league ain't competing for a championship. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, oh, does Portland have A-plus coaching? Or is, Terry is, Sots is good. No, no, no. I, good. Is that A-plus, though? Because now everybody's well, A-plus. Now, y'all just held up to the same thing. I can say A-plus. I said, tell I, I said a A-plus. I said, tell a Hold on, tell me. I said a coach he respects. And, and, okay, uh, well, that, that's a big difference. Well, Portland ain't with us. That's a big difference. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. I mean, because, again, I understand. I get that Russ and all of us, uh, unless there's someone to control us, we're, we're incapable of doing that. <laughs> no, that's what it sounds like. No, 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 that's no, no, what no, it is. But, 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 but every, everybody can't do it the same way you do it. Or, Let me oh, wait, my point, or I do it. Let me finish okay. my point. Because I, I know that that's the argument. Right. He's, they're all incapable. All oh, that purple and beef unless, over there. Yeah, and unless <laughs> unless the, we find the unicorn coach, they're incapable. Mm. They can't self-correct. Isaiah Thomas... 
didn't uh, grow on his own. No, nobody can do it without the perfect coach. That's BS for one. Oh, point thank two. You. Point two. Point two. If Kevin Durant, the second best player in the league, mm-hmm. leaves my franchise, and factually, I don't know what percentage of the reason why, but it's some sort of percentage because, man, that dude's out of control. Hmm. And I can't get, I can't do what I'm supposed to do uh, because that dude's out of control. If that doesn't cause you some self-reflection on your own, Hmm. I was playing with Kevin Durant and this dude bounced on me. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Russell Russell Westbrook is not incapable of self-reflection and correcting. Now, will he do it? I think not. Because one, anything he does will be excused by some. Because, oh my God. By some, by, by two on this panel yeah, right here. We don't have the. And y'all both wrong. Because you know what? It's impossible to blame Westbrook for Durant wanting to leave when it was a great decision, but impossible circumstances. Which, which franchise is better? Well, it's which one is. Of which Kevin franchise Durant. Is, ran better? Golden State or, or OKC? Is there a percentage of the Which team had Durant success left? in front of them or behind them? You got to understand what he was making the decision. Which market is better? Like, so Durant, his decision had nothing to do. with I'm not saying it had nothing to do with it, but to put the blame on him instead of saying, "KD, you said, made a great decision." For I yourself. laid it out. I thought very clearly. There's a certain percentage. I don't know what we can say. It's twenty percent. We can say it's five percent. We might be. It might be seventy percent. But there's a Some percent huh? that was on Russ. <laughs> That's clear to do as what? Day. They went to a finals, and then he made a projection and said, "You know what? We might not get Kevin back. Durant. You know what Kevin Durant said? I want to win championships. I don't but, want I to go to a better." Also- Following Stephen Jackson is back with Nick and Cece to explain why Ben Simmons isn't just an average player in the half court. Stephen is Dudley right about Ben Simmons? Truth sound like hate to people who hate the truth. Oh, Ooh. truth. Man, say that, like, yeah. say that again. Say that again. Truth sound like hate to people who hate the truth. Wow. I mean, it's, it's just the truth. He's he's not a good half court player. As you see, last game he had success by getting the ball up the hoop, pushing it, and getting quick baskets. Mm-hmm. Half court game is not his game. He can't shoot. He won't even shoot it. Jared Dudley, he's dead on, and I think that's the way they that's the way they're going to approach guarding him. The same way we we know he's not going to shoot. Mm-hmm. We're going to slow him down when he get the rebound and make him play him half court because that's the reason they won last game. Right. Every player has weaknesses in this game, and it's been just. Talked about, talked about, talked about as far as Ben Simmons and his inability to shoot. Mm -hmm. Um, My biggest problem with Ben Simmons is not his inability to shoot. Because even if you can't shoot, you shouldn't put yourself in a position where they can exploit your weaknesses. So if you're going to be one-dimensional, be the best one-dimensional player. So every time the ball went off the bucket, I would be trying to get in transition. Every time I tried to set up the offense the way they did, I would try to get a running start compared to a conventional guard setting up, calling the play, allowing everyone. I would move back a little bit so I can use my size and speed and try to get in the air over people. So my biggest thing with Ben Simmons is he doesn't know his game well enough that he plays it all the time. Mm-hmm. People force him to play their way. They force him. Jared Dudley is right. They force him to play in a half-court game. Now, in an up and down, if he was on the Showtime Lakers, he would be sensational mm-hmm. because they were up and down the court, pace, 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 pace. That's what Magic Johnson was best until he developed that shot. Now, Magic Johnson was a better player at a younger age, but that pace – Helped him out. My biggest problem with Ben Simmons is not that he can't shoot. Master what you can do. Yes, Dudley is right. He needs to get up and down more because he's almost unstoppable in the break, just like Giannis. You see the way Giannis is doing? Ben Simmons needs to be able to match a lot of what Giannis is doing until he develops that 15-foot jump shot. And I, I would argue that is when he's on the court, that's the way they play. They are overall this year eighth in the league in pace. They're even faster when he's on the court as opposed to on the bench. And Jared Dudley's half right here because we're only talking about the offensive end now. Mm -hmm. Because nobody says Ben Simmons in half-court defense is not an elite player. Like, we know he is an elite defensive player for his position. We know he's an A-plus player in transition. And this actually, to me, is the perfect microcosm for why I get so frustrated with the Ben Simmons hyper-critiques. So he's a very good defensive player. He's an A-plus player in transition. Let's call him a C-minus player in half-court offense, right? He, he, he Dudley called him average. So that would be a C. You want to call him a D player. Wh- whatever you want to call him, fine. That averages out to a B-plus basketball player. That averages out to an all-star. Averages out to a guy that gave you 18, 9, and 8 You can still be season. an all-star and people be disappointed. When you are the first pick in the draft, 
Life is about expectations. But so this is, but the, yes. Is that but, right or not? Of course, but do we expect guys to be their fully developed player in their second year in the league, th- or second year in the in playing, third year in the league? No, but but do we what, expect what? to see an arc? We expect to see someone go exactly, up. We talked Jimmy. about how all off season, at least he'd get better. He, he the shooting didn't get any better. Okay, I let's just be honest. Let's be honest. Were you happy with Ben Simmons? What he did in his shooting department no. last year? To, oh, okay. No, but that. But that's all we're talking about. But now. you're no. in the NBA. You should be able to even have a confidence to take a shot. Take a shot. Like, it's, like it's, your man is sitting way in the paint. You making the your, your Jack, whole. Jack, how many years? Terrible. Jack, how many years you've been retired? Five. Okay. In the off season, Jack, you work out hard. How many shots are you getting up a day? Shit, right now. Uh, well, a day, probably close to a hundred. Uh, agreed, but when Most you say I, at 41, I, understood, and you're, and this is why you're the big three leading scorer two years. But, 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 exactly. but, but the know. point is, though, you're in the NBA. You're you're an all star. How can you not shoot a jump shot? That's my thing. But th- so here's the thing, because see, you just said it. But that's what we're talking about. We're only talking about it because we're talking about it. We don't. We are. Fo- we. This is the one player in the league. He and Russ, in my mind, that we spend such a disproportionate amount of time talking about what they can't do. They, they, nobody denies what he's great at. So we just say, okay, he's great at it. Forget it. It's not interesting. Let's talk about, yes, should he have gotten better at shooting? We're talking about yeah. getting ready for game number three. What do you want mm-hmm. to talk about with him? Can, I, we could phrase the exact same conversation of, can the Nets prevent Ben Simmons from dominating the game the yeah, way but it did, did in game it, one? But it would still be based off Jared's comment, uh, uh, Dudley's comments. He'd be mm-hmm. like, hey, we got to slow him down. We got to put him in a half court. Then our comments would be, and, can they and, do that? And if teams can. And, uh, and, and it would go back to exactly what we're talking about. Is he going to ever be able to shoot? If he's if he's never able to shoot, then he will never reach his full potential. I don't know. We, I don't, I know him on TV now, mm-hmm. and I know he can't shoot now, right? But because we, he might be able to shoot one time, but I might not be on TV. That's fine. But but being on TV now, the last game he played in was maybe sensational. Absolutely, right. and we. It? Go ahead. Was it because of him or was it because the other guys around him finally started to shoot? No, it was because of him. No. He was the best player on the court. He was the guy that initiated everything. He was the difference maker. He was the one who adjusted his his hey. awful approach in game one to a great approach in game two. Nick, it, it's, 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 I think there's tremendous irony to the two people that you mentioned. Both of them you like. Mm-hmm. Russ, you mm-hmm. think he gets criticized too much. Uh, he ain't had no playoff success after averaging a triple-double, triple-double. Mm-hmm. Because in professional sports, you know what they pick out? He's not in college no more. They pick out the things that you can't do. If you're a good player, they pick out the things that you can't do. If you're a great player, they pick out the things that you haven't done or you can't do. That's what professional sports is about. It's not always about potential. It's about what do you do on a daily basis. And I know I know a lot of re- great regular season players. What separate them is when they do it in the playoffs. At the same time, I got to reiterate this. How can you be in the NBA? How can you be an all-star and cannot shoot? That's you must the biggest be amazing problem. Amazing at everything else. No, no, it's it, not. It's not about being amazing. It's about having enough confidence to attempt a shot. You're not even trying. Like you can at least try. That's the, That's my whole problem. Like you're not even trying. At least give yourself a chance. Finally, Chris Haynes and Jim Jackson are back with Whitlock and Wiley to look at the future of the Lakers organization. Question here is. Do you think this perception will have any effect on their offseason strategy? And I think it will. I think this is probably why Monty Williams, not Ty Lue or Jawan Howard, will get the job. Monty Williams less connected to LeBron. Mm. Ah, this is a tough one. Um, this story, it got some legs. Uh, a lot of people wasted ink on this story because LeBron's always been the puppeteer, always been calling shots. Even when he was against situations that were more adversarial, whether it's a Pat Riley or even a shrewd businessman and Dan Gilbert, like LeBron still found his ways. So what's going to be our measuring stick of, oh, these free agents are scared to go to a Lakers team that's ran by LeBron? Because here's a newsflash. It is going to be ran by LeBron. You think it's going to be ran by Rob Linka? Like, y'all really going to go that far? So LeBron's going to have his fingerprints on a lot of the moves going forward. But look at the Lakers in the offseason for the last 10, 20 years. Name the big free agent that they got outside of that guy, LeBron James. I'll wait. No, nobody. So let's not act like the Lakers are an attractive destination for big-time free agents because they haven't been. Two, LeBron has even said, I'm not the greatest recruiter. 
Like LeBron joined forces and everybody joined forces in Miami. But in championship mindset this offseason. Oh, don't you do that activation. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> All I'm saying is, a lot of times people could put out stuff and then when you really distill it, they ain't saying nothing. Because the Lakers are not used to getting free agents. LeBron's not used to guys just coming and joining him. So par for the course is for them to be unsuccessful, the team and the individual. But LeBron's running the ship and I think their strategy is we're going to hope. We'll see if they get somebody. It, Bron going to have some say. So I think the, one of the bigger challenges also, too, is this to Rob Palinka. As a former agent, he dealt with a lot of organizations before, a lot of agents. A lot of them don't trust some of the things he's done in the past. A lot of them may have some past history with him. That affects how free agents and people look at the Lakers as well. So mm-hmm. I think you're dealing with two sides of it, not just the LeBron effect, but you're dealing with the Rob Palinka effect coming from, I think, the agency side. Well, I, I'm going to take it to a, a different angle. Like, look, there's always been truth to that. Even when LeBron was in Cleveland, Miami. Like, management is going to talk to LeBron and see how he feels about certain moves, right. whether that's a coach or players. But I wrote last week when Magic Johnson relieved himself of his, his obligations that the Lakers organization— Quit. Quit. Yeah, well, quit. Well, he quit. Would he would leave himself. Leave himself. <laughs> we use a synonym. He, he wanted to keep his relationship with Gallo <laughs> Murray. I, I, I love Magic. Right. 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 But look, I, I was told that, you know, when they were compiling the list, this was Magic Johnson, Palinka before he, he left, they were compiling a list of candidates. Mark Jackson, Tyron mm. Lue, mm. Monty Williams. And I, told, I was told, I wrote this for Yahoo, of that Jeannie you know, felt like she didn't want the perception out there that mm. LeBron is running the coaching search and said that this is a bus-ran organization. Mm-hmm. So my problem with that is, is that, look, if Tyron Lue is the best candidate for the job, bring him on. Right. If you're thinking about perception or optics, you're, you're headed for the destruction, point blank. You shouldn't be worried about those type of things. This is the most pivotal, one of the most pivotal um, junctures in Lakers franchise history. This is not about what it looks like. It's about getting the right guy in, period. And I, I, I'm fearful that that might go against what you, what you said as well. Well, I, I think that I'm not a thousand percent sure that Jeannie Buss and the people whispering in her ear, Rob Palinka and Kobe Bryant, I'm not sure if those people are 1,000 percent committed to LeBron. And so if they go with a coach, if the strategy is to go with someone not LeBron approved, Maybe that's calling LeBron's bluff. And again, I, I, I still, I'm not a thousand percent sure LeBron's going to be in a Lakers uniform next season. Mm. And so, oh, oh definitely, mm. I am. I mean, he mm. checks the box that's necessary. You got to remember the Lakers since Dr. Buss has always wanted to win twofold. They wanted to win on the court, and they wanted to win off the court in terms of showtime and pizzazz. They never wanted to win the Spurs way. Like, they're not even built for that. In part, why you would go and give Kobe that contract at the end of his career, you need, you need meat in the seats. Why do you also get LeBron, even though you know that at the end of this contract, he's probably going to be going downhill? Because he's still box office. Like, LeBron is still going to make sure that the Lakers are the Lakers. They're the premier franchise in basketball, clearly. And this is a six-year drought. We just destroyed OKC and Westbrook for three first-round exits. This is the best franchise in basketball, and they haven't sniffed the playoffs in now six years, and they're still the premier brand. They keep LeBron because they need to stay that premier and brand. And I think the relevancy part of it, too, we talked about this before. Young guys don't look at the Lakers as that franchise anymore. I mean, because it, it just haven't been relevant. So when you're talking about trying to attract a free agent, who is that free agent that right now is like, okay, the Lakers are the best thing for me, okay? Because mm-hmm. keep in mind, we're certainly not talking about Kawhi. We know he's not coming. Jimmy Butler, we know that's not going to happen. KD is not going to happen. Maybe Kyrie, maybe Kimba, okay? For AD, you still got to trade in order to get that. So when you start to shrink the pool of free agents that make sense, that really, really can make an impact, the pool shrinks, okay? Unless you make that blockbuster deal with, you know, Anthony Davis, which a lot of league officials didn't want to happen during the course of the season, you're still going to be stuck in that situation where you got young guys with LeBron James and you got to figure out who that coach is going to be, who that but my, president my, is going to be. My contention is, though, I'm not sure if they feel like LeBron is Kareem or Shaq or <clears throat> they may think he's more like Dwight Howard when they acquired him. Mm. Again, is he a guy that can deliver? But don't forget, when Dwight was leaving... 
Stay D12, hashtag D12, billboards all around LA. This franchise actually went in and wanted Dwight Howard because they were like, oh, he was injured. So I I don't want this to land on LeBron. Uh, Covering the Lakers for so many years, this has happened time and time again. That's why we can't name the free agents that come here. So now everyone's going to say, well, we're a little apprehensive to play with LeBron. What's the last 20 years been about for the Lakers? And even though, even though I, I don't agree with Whitlock, but for him to have that think, that thought process just shows you the, the, the treasure trove of players that the Lakers have had over the history where they can look at somebody like LeBron James like that. It's like, hey, you know but what? They have more equity in those players, too. Yeah. They were there yeah. for that, more that, years. They have more championships. But, no, my, no, but look, no, no other the team the day, would look like It's still Los Angeles. It's still mm-hmm. the Lakers. Mm-hmm. They're too valuable to the NBA. The NBA will make a way for the Lakers because they need him, with or without LeBron James. Thank you for listening to the Hoops on Fox podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a five-star review letting us know what you think of the show.